Hello, hello, I'm Ariana. If you're new here, if you're not, welcome back to my channel. Today we're getting into this Sunset Smoky Eye Inspired 2016 Inspired eyeshadow look for fall and this is also a half cut crease tutorial so this is the final look and we're gonna get into exactly how i created this and let's get into it hi okay so we are gonna go ahead and prime our lids with the nyx can't stop won't stop concealer in the shade alabaster so we're gonna be going in with like some yellows some oranges and i really want the eyeshadow to pop so i'm going to go ahead and prime my eyes with this so this is going to be a full half cut crease eyeshadow look and it's kind of inspired by the 2016 um sunset kind of eyeshadow look for that inspiration i thought that this palette would be perfect to recreate that kind of look and kind of bring it into 2024 so we're going in with the modern renaissance palette from Anastasia Beverly Hills. This is very um, dusty. She's used and abused, but very well loved. Okay, so I'm going to be going in with her and only her, but if you don't have this palette, then definitely like fall colors and you'll be seeing what I'm going to do with them. Um, I always say that the eyeshadow palette doesn't really matter. Like, of course, the quality is important, um, but you don't 100 necessarily 100% necessarily need the same exact eyeshadow palette that you see in a tutorial or something because you can just recreate it with similar shades. It doesn't have to be exactly the same um, or just anything that you have or a completely different color palette as well. I'm going to be going in with the shade Cypress Umber which is the darkest brown palette, darkest brown shade in the palette and I'm just gonna go ahead and put that on my outer corner. The half cut crease eyeshadow looks, I usually like to do an outer, a darker outer corner and then kind of let that contrast with the half cut crease or like the inner corner cut crease situation. So this is why I like to kind of do a darker brown or like a the darkest shade of the color palette that we're going with in the outer corner. So as soon as I kind of blend out the initial pigment on the brush, onto the outer corner i will just kind of slowly make a eyeshadow wing releasing the pressure from the brush so it's not as harsh as it is here and then i'll also take it into the inner corner and along the crease as well so we're kind of using the leftover pigment that's on the brush to stay consistent with the shade but not so consistent with the consistency <laughs> of the pigment so like here it's going to be a little bit lighter than here, but we are still using the same shade. And you don't have to dip back in, you can literally use the leftover pigment on the brush to make it a nice soft blend and basically just create the shape that we want to go with. And you can always add more eyeshadow on if you want like this part to be darker, um, but it's harder to like remove eyeshadow if it's too dark. I went ahead and kind of dusted off the pigment on my little color switch here. And I'm going in with the same brush to just buff out the edges of the shape we just created to make it easier to blend in the transition shade. Okay, so after we have this crease blended out a little bit, I don't think I'm going to go any darker than that, but you definitely can if you wanted to make it more dramatic. But I do want this look to be very wearable um, and like a daytime kind of cute fall situation. So after we... Go, sorry, I just dropped this palette all over my gray sweatpants. I love that for me. I'm going to go in with kind of like a orangish transition shade. I don't want to make it dark up here at all. I want the focus to be the half cut crease. So I'm just going to go in with one more shade. And we're going to go in with Burnt Orange, which is the darker of these two transition shades. And it's a little bit more orange as well. So I just picked up some of that pigment and I'm going to start on the crease area so this is like where the darkest part of the dark brown shade should be um, and i'm going to start and work my way from here and work it up if you start where it's blended out then it's just going to create just a bunch of darkness going up so we're going to start where the darkest part is and then we're just going to transition it up just like how we blended out that dark brown shade all the way up toward the brow bone so this is going to create a nice gradient it's going to lighten this up as well and then it's just going to make it look nice and blended going up toward the brow bone and like a beautiful gradient transition so i'm just like swirling it around and blending in with that shade and just kind of um, using light pressure as well 
So I am pretty happy with this. It's like a the slightest tint of orange um, and this is a pretty good base for a half cut crease. So it doesn't really matter that there's not too much pigment, it's not too orange, like you can't really see the orange, um, but this is like a good base for the focus of the look which is going to be the inner corner which we're going to get into right now. So I'm going to be using the same concealer that I use to prep and prime the lid and I just loaded that up on my little concealer brush. So this is like the smallest concealer brush that I have. It allows you to have more control when you are carving out your lid when you're doing a cut crease or a half cut crease. So I'm going to go ahead and start carving out my eyelid. So when I say that it just means that you're creating the shape of your eyelid in that half cut crease. When you do a full cut crease you're just creating an illusion of a bigger eyelid but with a half cut crease you're just stopping in like three quarters of the lid so I'm very very used to my eye so I can just do this in one swipe and fill it in but if you are a beginner or if you don't really do this often I suggest kind of stamping the brush on so you can create that shape and then just focus on connecting those stamps to create a nice clean line so now I'm just kind of smoothing out the concealer from the top line because of the way that it kind of went onto my lid. And I'm also just going to kind of create a nice blended outer corner here. So it's totally fine if the concealer doesn't look as blended as possible in the outer corner um, because we're going to fix that with eyeshadow. But I just want to make sure that the consistency of the concealer is the same. Um, throughout the whole lid because when I do pack on the eyeshadow I don't want it to look patchy so that can happen if there's like a, a spot of excess concealer so you just want to make sure that it's nice and blended out and it's all like the same Alexa stop sorry so I'm taking my little tiny kabuki brush from Real Techniques and I'm just going over the concealer. I'm trying to stay away from the edge so that it's like a nice clean line. If you end up kind of making it a little bit blurry, that's totally fine. Um, you can clean it up. I will show you because I did that. So I'm just, again, making sure that it's a nice consistent base for the eyeshadow. So I'm just going to take a clean brush and I'm going to just go over where it got messed up where it's a little blurry and that should clean that right up if you want to go back in with some eyeshadow to kind of darken up the perimeter of the crease you definitely can but then you'd have to blend that out so make sure you're using the right tools if i were to do that i would use the same brush that i just fixed the concealer with and then i would use this really tiny blending brush here it's literally so small to get into a really small space and blend that out so i'm going to go ahead and pack on the yellow shade so we're going in with the shade golden ochre from the modern renaissance palette which is the yellow shade that they have here so when i load up my brush for a half cut crease or just packing on some eyeshadow over um, concealer i want to make sure that i have loaded it up on both sides so that we get the same consistency across the entire area that we're kind of going for and then again you just want to make sure that you're paying attention to the top part so that we're not blurring any harsh lines that we want to be there so I'm going to go in with my really tiny um, little packer brush and I'm going to go in and make sure that we get that as close to the concealer line as possible. So I am pretty happy with the consistency and just the overall look of this right now. So I'm going to go in with the transition shade. I think I'm going to go in with the same shade that we used to blend out that dark brown in this transition area and I'm just going to place it right in the middle of the dark brown and the yellow so I'm just kind of tapping it in and then it's basically going to be like a stripe but then we're going to blend out the edges so it looks like it's a nice gradient transition this is actually really really easy to do when you're working with shades that just go together it's just less blending that you have to do so this is more of like a muted yellow and a muted orange. If you want to go a little bit more 
vibrant and a little bit more colorful, then I definitely suggest you use a different palette or a different yellow and a brighter orange. They do also have this like deeper orange real girl right here. Um, I wanted to stay muted and again a little bit more wearable. I'm going to take my concealer brush and use the same concealer that I used under my eyes and we're just going to go ahead and give this a swipe and clean it up. So this is going to make your eye eyeshadow um, symmetrical on both sides and just kind of snatch your eyes and just uplift your eye shape as well. So I think I am actually going to go ahead and add a little bit more orange. Um, I'm going to go in with a real girl shade to make it a little bit more vibrant because this is a really nice muted look but I do want it to be just a little bit more colorful. I'm just going to go ahead and do the same exact thing. So this is giving us a little bit more of a pop of color. I'm going to tap on the most of the pigment the yeah most of the pigment on the center create that stripe and then we're just going to kind of blend it out and into the dark brown and then on the other side into the yellow so again you can go as pigmented as you want you can make it as bright as you want or you can just use different shades this is like kind of playing off of my skin tone. It's blending in with it a little bit, but you can still see it's like a pale yellow. So definitely keep that in mind with whatever kind of look you're going for, but I think this is really cute for like an everyday situation. Um, it's still very fall. So I'm gonna go ahead and do the other eye and I will be right back. Okay, and here is the final look. So I went ahead and added some lashes. I added some brown liner on the waterline in my tight line a little bit and some mascara on the lower lash line as well so this is the final look and i feel like it really does like bring the whole thing together and it looks very just a little bit more making my eyes pop so it was very muted before the mascara before the eyeliner and i think it's really cute so uh, this is the final look it was super easy to do you can definitely go ahead and add some um, eyeliner if you want you can leave your lash line lower lash line bare um i went ahead and added like a half lash so they're like um underneath my lash line um and i used this lash kit it's called elastin fresh uh, fresh start this is the lash box i got those from tiktok shop it's so cute i love it so much they go they're supposed to go underneath your lashes and i feel like this just looks so much better than like a harsh strip um on the top and like also me doing like these eyeshadow videos um it just looks a lot more natural so like you can't really see the band when i close my eyes and it just makes the eyeshadow look look so much better um it this, these are like a new style that i tried i've never tried this this style before because there's like five different styles in this box um not sure how i feel about this style um they do have more natural styles um but i wanted to see what this one looked like it is a little bit shiny and I only put on two clusters so I didn't put on like all four so that's why it looks just a little bit lopsided um, but I do like to kind of press the beginning down to make it look a little bit more like gradual okay so yeah let me know what you guys think I really like this eyeshadow look it's giving fall it's a little bit kind of um inspired by the sunset fall eyeshadow look sunset smoky eye from 2016 um and my modern renaissance palette is still up and working and doing its thing so thank you guys so much for watching please let me know what you feel about this look about these lashes all of the products that i use will be in the description box down below if you haven't already don't forget to subscribe before you leave thank you guys again so much for watching don't forget to leave a like down below if you like this video and i'll see you guys next time bye